فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد um, We are in our guide for a da'i how to be a da'i who succeeds in his da'wah the first point that we wanted to mention is, um, or we sorry, we were in the second session, so we spoke about the first part of the um, uh, of the guide. We spoke about um, we spoke about knowledge and matters uh, related to that. Today we're going to go into the second point. Today, in the Lal Kareem, we're going to talk about. First point is, what mafhumul hikmah, the understanding of what hikmah means. Understanding Hikmah. Second was Ahmiyatul Hikmah, the importance of Hikmah. Three Anwa'ul Hikmah, the types of Hikmah. Four Darajatul Hikmah, the levels of Hikmah. Five Turqut Tahseel al Hikmah, ways to obtain Hikmah. And last but not least, Inzalun Nasi Manazilahum wa Maratibahum. Placing the people in their positions and stages and their levels. So today's session, inshallah, we're going to talk about uh, those six points. بِإِذْنِ الْكَرِيمِ مَفْهُومُ الْحِكْمَةِ What is meant by hikmah? That's the first point. لُغَةً وَاسْتِلَاحًا Linguistically and technically, what does the word hikmah uh, actually mean? Hikmah لُغَةً means, um, or it's used as إِصَابَةِ um, الْحَقِّ Linguistically, it means to get the correct position بِالْعِلْمِ with knowledge وَالْعَقْلِ and a way of intellects. This is how it's mentioned by Fairuz Abadi in his kitab Al-Qamus uh, Al-Muhit Lisan Al-Arab Ibn Mandur also says something like that and Al-Bukhtar Al-Suhah also Ibn Athir in his kitab Al-Nihayat Fi Gharib Al-Hadith something like that as well and if you go to Raghib Al-Asfahani in his Al-Mufradat Fi Gharib Al-Quran so the word Hikmah as I said it linguistically means what? to be precise in the Haqq by way of knowledge and by way of intellects what does it mean technically? what does the word um what does it mean technically? Technically, it means al-isabatu. It is to be precisely and basically gain fil aqwali in your speech, wal afali and in your actions, wal iradat and your wills, wal i'tiqad and in your belief, wa wadu shay. Meaning to be correct. In your speech, your actions, your wills and wants, your belief, and to place things in its right place. You can put things in its right place. When it's needed, you can do it, and when it's not needed, you can stay away from it. The word hikmah, it has come in the Quran in two ways. The first way, it has been mentioned alone. In the sense where it's not being connected to something. And when I say it is not connected to something, it means that it has only one meaning and not a other meaning connected to it. Such as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran, Udu ila sabila rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idatil hasana wa jadilhum billati hi ahsan. Call to the path of your Lord with wisdom. This wisdom is mufrada; it's singular. Um, the second way, so this type of um, hikmah is the one that we mentioned. Al-isabatu fil aqwal wal-afal wal-iradat al-atiqad wal-wad'ah shay. 
um, في موضعه. That's the definition for this one. But it also has kam maqruna. It has another meaning connected with it. And and it is meant by the aqwal of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his actions, and also his consent. So it, this meaning is what it carries with it. As Allah said in the Quran, "Rabbana wabgat fihim rasoola minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yuallimuhum al kitab wa al hikmata wa yuzakihim inna ka antal aziz al hakim." Here. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَدْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ The hikmah here is meant by the sunnah. So here is, the meaning is not alone. Here it's connected to something. Meaning it's connected to the sunnah. And it's connected and mentioned next to the book of Allah. So that's the meaning. Also Allah said in another ayah, وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ So here, the, Quran, the hikmah is what? Is the sunnah. And it's mentioned with what? It's mentioned next to the kitab of Allah. The person who explained that this here right now, the hikmah here is meant by the sunnah, is Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah Allah. And Al-Allamat ibn al-Qayyim in his Madarij al-Salikin. Al-Allamat ibn al-Qayyim in his kitab. The second point, the importance of the da'wah. The ahmiyyah and the importance of wisdom, sorry. The ahmiyyah al-hikmah, the importance of wisdom. The first one is, uh, the first point to show you is Al-Hikmatu fi da'wati ila Allah Wa qad amara Allah ta'ala nabiyya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bid-da'wati ila Allah ta'ala bil-hikmah The first one is that Allah ordered the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To have hikmah in his da'wah As Allah said in the ayah Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil-hikmati Wal-maw'idati al-hasanati Wajadilhum billati hi ahsan So Allah ordered the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come with hikmah in his da'wah and a good mu'idah and to debate with them in a good way. The second one is tatabbu'u siyarati al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second one is man tatabba'a siyarati al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who follows the Prophet's biography wajada annahu kana yulazimu al-hikmata fi jami'i umuri. You would find that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he followed wisdom in all of his affairs wa khasatan fi da'watihi ila Allahi Azza wa Jal, especially in his da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَقْبَلَ النَّاسَ He faced the people with what? وَدَخَلُوا فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى With the way he did the da'wah, his wisdom and the method in which he used. The people came into Islam in numbers with the virtue of Allah. And then after that, with the virtue of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and his wisdom. الَّذِي غْمَلَى اللَّهُ قَلْبَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ <coughs> That's the second point to show you that the Messenger of wisdom was what? It was in his seerah. Number three. <coughs> Some people assume that the hikmah, or they even believe that the hikmah, it's exclusively only on the speech and how soft the person speaks. And how kind and how forbearance the person is. That's all they think. And this, to be honest, is a deficiency. And it's a deficient understanding of the reality and the meaning of the word hikmah. Because the hikmah, it can be istikhdam al-rifq wal-leen. 
to use lean speech, soft words, kind and tenderness with clarifying the haqq with knowledge and implementing it and in terms of belief as well. So using this way, it is part of hikmah. But with it comes mentioning the haqq by way of knowledge, by way of implementation, by way of belief with evidence. And this type, which is the first one, this level, it is used. It is used for every wise person. From the people, from the humans. We use that type of rifq, that type of uh, way of speech, to a person who we know is what? Is a, is a wise person from the humans who we know will accept the haqq and they are not hard-headed. If we know a person is hard-headed, we don't use this kind of ma manners with them. We're not soft with them, we're not lean with them, we don't have an uh, hilm and afu towards them. No, we're harsh and we're tough and rough with them. But if a person is what? Um, but if a person is a person we know he takes the haqq, he'll accept it. And he's not hard-headed. In that situation, we will, uh, we, will, um, we will use softness. The second point that, that the hikmah can be, and not only by speech, which is nice, because that, that, that method can be it, but it also can be by using reminder which is good, beneficial reminder. Such as what? at fil haq To bring hope and want in the haq. To say, if you do this, you go to Jannah. If you act like this, you enter Jannah. If you say this, you will become from the people of Jannah. Put in that hope and that want and that zeal into the person. It's good. Also, وَالتَّرْغِيبُ min al To put fear in him in terms of the batil. So if you do this, you're going to face the consequences. And it's severe. And, 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 and. And this one is used for who? This level. This one is used for a person who's what? Who is acknowledging the haqq. But in him is what? Heedlessness. He's heedless. And desires are, are revolving around him. And whims. That's blocking him from what? Following the haq. So you use that level for them. And sometimes, sometimes you use debate. With a good way, good manners. With good manners. وَلُطْفٍ and also by way of kindness in your speech. وَلِينِ كَلَامٍ وَدَعْوَةِ إِلَى الْحَقِّ and calling to the good. وَتَحْسِينُ بِالْأَدِلَةِ الْعَقْلِيَةِ وَالنَّقْلِيَةِ and also beautifying your evidences by way of and uh, textual evidences and intellectual evidences. You you beautify it like that. وَرَدِّ الْبَاطِلِ بِأَقْرَبِ الطَّرِيقِ and that you also refute the batil in the fastest of ways. وَأَنْسَبُ بِعِبَارَةِ and you also the most correct terminology in the correct way you don't refute the batil in another batil or you don't use terminology that were not used by the ulama and the people of knowledge use terminology which are correct يكون, and that it's not the intent behind the debate should not be مجرد المجادلة. the intent behind the debate should not be just a, just a mere debate it shouldn't be والمغالبة, and that you just want to overcome the person العلو, and that you want to be high and you know see the uh, seen as the higher one. Bella Buddha but rather and Yakun al Qasad that the intent is what? Bayan al Haqi is to clarify the haq. Wahidayat al Khalq and to guide the human, the people. Wahadihi al Martaba and this Martaba to stakdamu it is used for Likulli Mu'anidin Jahidin to every person who's hard headed, who refuses the haq and doesn't want to take it in. Wataratan and sometimes al hikmah that wisdom is used what? The hikmah is used. Bistikdam al quwa strength is used. Bil kalam al qawi tough words are used. Wa bil darb sometimes even physically beating the person. Wa ta'dib wa iqamat al hudud and establishing the legislations. Liman kana lahu quwa wa salt wa saltana for the person who has strength and power over the people. Wal jihad fi sabilillah 
and also in jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bisayfi by way of sword. Wassinan by way of tongue. Tahta liwa. Behind the banner. Wali amri muslimin. Behind the banner of the believers of the Muslims. Ma'a mura'ati al-dawabid. With that time, you're also looking and uh, you're looking after what? The principles and the conditions. Alati dalla alayhi al-kitabu wa sunnah. That the kitab and sunnah have indicated. Wa hadhi al-martaba and this level. تستخدم, it is used لكل معاند It is used for every hard-headed person جاحد Who knows the حق but doesn't want to follow it ظلم Anyone who uh, uh, A transgressor And a wrongdoer ولم, ولم يرجع إلى الحق بل رده ووقف في طريقه And he doesn't want to come back to the حق And he is not coming back to the حق But rather he wants to stand in between the حق This person That is used for them As the uh, poet said, um, دَعَ الْمُصْطَفَى دَهْرًا بِمَكَّةَ لَمْ يُجَبْ لَمْ يُجِبْ لَمْ يُجَبْ وَقَدْ لَانَ مِنْهُ جَانِبٌ وَخِطَابٌ فَلَمَّا دَعَى وَالسَّيْفُ صَلَّتْ بِكَفِّهِ لَهُ أَسْلَمُوا وَاسْتَسْلَمُوا وَأَنَابُوا The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم دعا المصطفى نبي الله محمد he called دَهْرًا a portion of time for a long time in مكة 13 years لم يجب nobody obeyed him وَقَدْ لَانَ مِنْهُ جَانِبٌ وَخِطَاب and he softened his words and his speech for them. But when he called with his sword, Sallat bi kafihi. The Prophet he got his hand ready and he got his sword. So he used that also as a da'wah. Ali Sallam. Lahu aslamu the people they took Islam was taslamu and they submitted wa anabu and they repented and they. And that is mentioned. That poetry was said by al Imam al Sahabi al Jalil. And Hassan ibn Thabit. So we mentioned three things that is the importance of uh, hikmah. It's just that the third one we mentioned uh, refuting the concept of those who say that the hikmah is exclusive by way of speech, by way of forgiveness, by way of forbearance. All of that is, is incorrect. Alhamdulillah. The fourth is hikmah taj'alu da'i ila Allah yuqaddiru umura qadriha. That the hikmah makes the da'i, the one that's calling to the path of Allah, to an yuqaddir al-umur, that he weighs the matter, it's correct weighing. That's the important. Because the wisdom teaches the person is that they are able to weigh matters. فَلَا يُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالنَّاسُ بِحَاجَةِ إِنَا النَّشَاطِ وَالْجَدِّ وَالْعَمَلِ فَلَا يُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا He doesn't make the people become aesthetic from the dunya. He doesn't. When what? When nasi bi hajati, when the people are in need, in al-nashati wal jid wal amal, when the people need to work and they need to, for example, he comes to a society where they, they don't even like the dunya. These people are all not marrying, they are not, they're not even down with the da with dunya, and etc. And that's that kind of, his wisdom teaches him, no, these people, you have to bring them and say, listen, no, come back, work, achieve things. Marry, uh, make money. So he uses that. And, and if he sees a group of people who have cut to the dunya, who've left the deen, he brings them back. So basically, anyone who goes extreme both ways, his wisdom tells him that he talks to that person where he lacks, not what person has. So he brings him back all the time to the middle. Hikmah. Yuqaddiru al-umura biqadariha. He... Gives matters and weighs matters in the way it should be. The fifth, which is the last, is wisdom, hikmah, تَجْعَلُ الدَّاعِيَ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَتَأَمَّلُ وَيُرَاعِ أَحْوَالَ الْمَدْعُوِينَ وَظُرُوفَهُمْ وَأَخْلَاقَهُمْ وَطَبَائِعَهُمْ That the, um, the, the da'i, wisdom makes him observe the situation of the people in which he's calling to. He's calling, sorry. And their, situ- and their current manners. And their natures, how their different natures differs. Well, wasail and the means alati tuna min min qibaliha, and he also learns and looks at means in which he can get to them. You see, so he observes matters, and he talks to them in that matter which their mind can comprehend. He talks to them in that way, because he knows their akhlaq and how they take in things and 
how they want things and naam. the third point inshallah which is what anwa'ul hikmah the type the third type now we finished the first uh, we finished that point number 5 we finished now we're moving on to the next chapter t- 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 chapter we done first two the first two chapters that we done with was what the first one was what the first one was mafhumul hikmah the meaning and the understanding of hikmah the second one was ahmiyatul hikmah the importance of hikmah the third which is anwa'ul hikmah the types of hikmah um the first type of hikmah is called hikmatul ilmiyatul nazariyah it is the wisdom which is knowledge based and what does that mean it basically means it means ittila ala bawatin al ashya is to observe the inner matters wa ma'rifat irtibat al asbab bi musabbibatiha khuluqan khilqan wa amran wa qadar wa shar'a he looks at the inner matters pertaining so he looks at inside observation analyzes matters um internally how they are and how the inner is a, a connected to the outer and how the means is connected to the results by way of that which allah has created and how he created and ordered it by how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined it by way of legislation and by way allah predestined predestined it. he looks at matters like that this is just based on pure just ittila observation and it's called hikmatul ilmiyatul nazariya it's based on knowledge and observation the second type is amaliya hikmatul amaliya it's now applying in the knowledge in which he took in he now has the knowledge he's taken it in and now what he's doing is whatever he's observed and he's analyzed he's now going to apply it and this is then what is known as wad'u shay fi mawdi'i placing things in its correct place he he puts everything in the right place because he now knows the way things are connected he knows how the inner is so the outer he knows how to deal with it and he knows how to place uh, matters in its right place and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave the prophets these two as he said um subhanahu wa ta'ala about nabiullah ibrahim rabbi habli hukman oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me hukum uh hukum Hukmah here is hikmah and nazariyah which is what the first type is what rabbi habli hukman the first one hukman is what is the first type it means um knowledge based observation the second one which is what wa al hikni bis salihin and this is the hikmah al amaliya is that clear muhammad so that ayah combines the two types of hikmah the first type is what rabbi habli hukman which is what it is ilmiyatul nazariya and the second one is wal hikni bis salihin beautiful which is ta hikma amaliya also allah said in the ayah innani ana allah la ilaha illa ana this is hikmatul nazari ilmiyatul nazariya teaching him that this is la ilaha illallah the wisdom behind it and then fa'budni wa shimi is what the amaliya the hikmatul amaliya also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said and inni abdullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiya this is hikmatun and hikmatun ilmiyatun nazariya i have the book i have something you can observe you can see the wisdom in and the second type is what and in in the ayah wa usani bis salati wa zakati ma dumtu hayya and this is hikmatul amaliya wisdom in which you need to apply now um also allah said in the ayah fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah this is hikmatun nazariya ilmiyatun nazariya and the other part which is wastaghfir li dhanbik is hikmatun amaliya also allah says in the ayah yunazzilu al malaikata bil ruh min amrihi ala man yasha min ibadihi an anziru annahu la ilaha illa ana and this is hikmatun ilmiyatun nazariya fattaqun is hikmatun an amaliya those are the two types of the hikmah we're moving on to the fourth point which is the levels of hikmah the levels of hikmah the first level of hikmah is an tu'tiya kull shay'in haqqah that you give everything its rights wala tu'ad wala wala tu'addihi hadda 
and that you do not surpass it its levels, its limits. And that you do not hasten it before its time. And that you do also do not delay it from its time. Because everything has what? It has hudud, it has boundaries. And it has nihayat. Nihayat means what? It has ending that a person has to reach. The second type of hikmah is what? Or the second level of hikmah is what? Ma'rifatu is to recognize Abdullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justness. Fi wa'idihi in his warnings. That Allah, even though he is warning us, and he is talking about the hellfire and destruction, and this is what? This is based on Allah's uh, justice. And wa'ihsanu, and that also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Generosity in his wa'ad, in the promises he has given us. All of that, the first, that's the second level. You recognize that, you know it, you have understanding of it. The third is al-basira, insight. And basira is the highest level of ilm. Ilm is the highest level is basira. Knowledge is when you know a matter and you perceived it in the way it is without any doubt in your heart, that's knowledge. But basira is when you have the intricates of the matter, you have even deeper, deeper, deeper understanding of it. So your perceptions, your perception has now reached the next level. This is insight, this is basira. You with me? Because as I said, knowledge is what? It's perception of something as it is with certainty, correct? The perception has levels. Knowledge is the, the minimum can be knowledge. Like in Basira is deep, deep, deep perception that the person has. He has very deep perception of the matter. The Basira in the Da'wah is three types. First of all, you have insight of what you're going to call the people to. And that means knowing the religion of Allah. The second one is أَنْ يَكُونَ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةِ بِالْحَالِ الْمَدْعُو That the second one is that you know the person you're calling the da'wah to a bit about them and understand them. What is his religious background is? What his uh, social background is? His belief system? What kind of problems that this person has? His knowledge, how high is it, how low is it? His economical, you have to have understanding somehow of him. So you can put forward to him what is most befitting. Number three is أَنْ يَكُونَ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرَةٍ That the person has insight of كَيْفِيَةُ الدَّعْوَةِ How he's going to transmit this da'wah that he has. So he knows what he's going to give. He knows what da'wah he's going to give. He has understanding of the da'wah. He has insight of the da'wah and the religion. And he also has insight of the person who's going to give the da'wah to. And now the third one which is the message that he's going to give the da'wah to, he has insight of it. How he's going to give it. In what way is he going to use? Is he going to... Uh, um, is, how is he going to use it? He knows when he needs to be harsh, he'll use the harshness. He knows the means when he sometimes used to be, needs to be soft, how he is soft. He knows when... And he needs to be in between, not too harsh, not too soft. But in between is what's needed. He knows it. He, the kafiyah. Turuq, way to gain hikmah. Way to gain hikmah. 